welcome back to Made to Flourish with your host, Ali Alamea, where we learn to blossom by faith and flourish within. I believe the Lord is calling us to rise up, take a stand, and flourish. To listen to this episode, grab some water, a cup of coffee, or tea, sit back, kick up your feet, relax, and enjoy this talk show. What's up, my people peeps? This is an interesting way to say hello, but I have actually been enjoying it. And for the past few years, if you know me, you know that I love to say peeps. I literally add it to everything. So with that being said, what's up, my peeps? Today, we're going to talk about a topic that I have been pondering for a while and I absolutely love. So I hope that I can inspire you as well to love this word. And that word is contentment. So I want to start off by asking a question. How do we know if we are content? This is a big one and I hopefully will be able to share the wisdom that God has given me and ask some questions, share some verses, and really help us find the answer to how do we know if we are content in the season we're in. I think there are many things that we could look at to see if we are actually content or if we're looking at other things, paying attention to other people's lives, or thinking that the grass is greener on the other side. Maybe we can also ask ourselves, are we willing to stay where we are or in what we're doing, or do we desire to run and start over and start something new? And to simplify that question, I'll just like to say, are we willing to stay or do we desire to run? And with that word run or question run, there might be a lot of things that come to mind or things that can surface like what do you mean or what does running look like or what do you mean by running, which I just said that. (laughs) Anyway, you get my point. So we will unpack these couple questions as we go throughout this episode. But first, I want to start off with some prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for all that you're doing in me and through me. I just ask that you, Holy Spirit, would begin to make yourself known, that we would be able to acknowledge your presence, that you're here and you're not far away, and you desire for us to walk closely with you and learn about the Father's heart. So I thank you for your presence and your goodness and your truth, and I ask that right now, everything that's trying to come and distract us would be removed in Jesus' name and that you would use my voice, my words, the things that you spoke to me to inspire the people that are listening to this episode. And I ask, Father God, that you would bring the right person, the right people to listen to this and that they would feel your presence, filling them up and giving them the courage and the boldness that they need to be able to flourish and grow into the person that you are calling them to in this season. I thank you and I praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. So I would like to start off by reading a verse in Philippians chapter 4 verses 11 through 12. I guess a few verses. Um, I'm reading in the ESV version and it says, Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low And I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. So I have a friend that gave me an example of discontentment, and I thought I should share with you guys because it really helped me understand. So she was sharing that when she was in middle school, she would drive by her high school or future high school, and she would be dreaming about the day that she would get there. She would pass by every day, just counting the days down or desiring, like, when will I get there? When will that day be? And she was so focused on that. And when she got to high school, all she wanted to experience was the freedom of college and she would constantly be thinking about college and which one to go to and when it would start. Although this could be something good where she found that it was discontentment was because she couldn't enjoy the current moment. She was constantly thinking about the next thing and she mentioned she would like to say that discontentment with the current situation and excitement for the next situation would go away But in a way, it only gets worse if we don't focus on being content in the current situation. This could go into our relationships, into our friendships, into our 
day-to-day lives where we forget to be present because we're so focused on what's next or what does tomorrow bring or where will I be in five years or what kind of job will I have next instead of really focusing on today and really seeing, okay, God, what do you want me to do today? How can I enjoy today, day by day, without trying to plan and live more in the future, but actually live in the present? And this really brought a lot of clarity to me because that's something I have walked through where I am normally such a futuristic thinker. And I think I mentioned in other episodes where I feel like the Lord literally picked me up and sat me down and is telling me, hey, we need to focus on today, like even if the things aren't so exciting and it doesn't seem like things are moving on so fast how you want them to, we need to focus on today. And what does today look like? How can we prepare for tomorrow and not for 10 years down the road? And that was a really big thing for me to try to focus on because my mind didn't work like that. And I think it aligns perfectly with contentment. Because in the season that we're in, if we're able to be content in what we're doing, even if it seems mundane or it's not exciting, then we're able to be fully present in the things that God is asking us to do today. And we have the space to ask him, what do you want me to do today? How can I serve my neighbor today? How can I love my friend today? Instead of focusing so much on what's next and where we're going and what we're doing in the future, We can actually take that moment to pause and really respond. So I'm going to give the example of a job because that's where I'm learning contentment. It's so easy for me to, I wouldn't say quit, but find a reason to start over and go somewhere else because I tend to get easily bored. But the Lord showed me that it's not me actually getting bored, it's me not being content in my current situation. So if you can think of something where you don't feel content, whether that's a relationship, your career, your job, your marriage, your family, anything, I want to point out some things that would be able to help you see. You might experience irritation, you might feel bored or have unmet expectations, or you may feel like you're longing for something new. And part of these things was what I explained in my job situation, but I like to bring it back to the verses we read in Philippians because at the end of this letter, Paul actually explains how he's struggling with many things, but the spirit of contentment is what's helping him through it all. In times of great prosperity and in times of great need, Paul has learned how to be content. So honestly, I think that it's a harder lesson for us to learn considering the time that we're living in where everything is so fast-paced and the demand for constant change is always present. I mean, with this kind of culture, we actually live in smaller, shorter periods of contentment and we're continuously longing for the next great thing, the next big thing. This way of living can be very harmful to us in different situations and circumstances. In a big area that this would actually harm is our relationships. There's a lot of difficulties that can arise from not being content. We could assume bad things or we could not be as present and it really causes a lot of divide and frustration, irritation, boredom, and we may be looking for something else or starting over and honestly just a side note in my life I could totally see this because when I was younger and I didn't know Jesus I did not know the value of having good friendships or being in a stable friendships like healthy ones because I was terrified I would get scared and I would close up and I would not talk to people anymore and I would constantly try to find something new or start over and I feel like this really causes a lack of intimacy, lack of true friendships. And thankfully, the Lord has healed my heart in that way. So now I could see the value and actually put in the work to be able to, I don't know, like work through the hard things with people. But that was a challenge and I didn't even realize. And I hope that serves as an example to you guys, even if you didn't struggle with friendships, but maybe you struggled in a different area 
where you see that you might be starting over and might be like not able to reach a certain depth to that whether it's a job or career friendships or um, different areas I can't think of something else right now but try to ask the Lord like what is it that I am afraid to press into and where am I lacking contentment I think that this is a common struggle and it's not really talked about a lot, so don't feel bad, don't feel guilty if this is something you're struggling with, but I am just amazed with the Lord that he keeps bringing this up to me and I really hope that this could bless you guys because it's something that is important. Sometimes we tend to stroll around life or walk around life and we tend to hold this bitterness or judgment or different things that are like making us feel icky or not secure or not grounded and we don't even realize but the main thing is contentment. Sometimes we need to just breathe, be still and really look around and see how blessed we are and how much good we actually have and I know that there's difficult times and we have to feel the hard things too. But I believe that when we see all the blessings that we have and we're able to be content whether we have something or we have all we need or we don't, we will be able to be in tough situations and actually feel secure and feel safe and feel grounded because ultimately we have the Lord Jesus Christ and he is our everything and he supplies it all. So I'm not saying we have to have absolutely nothing, but I hope you guys are understanding what I'm saying with in Jesus Christ, we have all that we need and we have that security and that peace. So we are able to be content, but also we tend to want to run to the next thing or find something new. So that's what causes the uneasiness in us. And we may feel anxious or we may feel uneasy or unsettled, but if we're the ones picking ourselves up and trying to start over, that kind of makes sense because we aren't building roots and we're not grounded or having the stability we need to actually grow and flourish. I read this book a long time ago and there is a sentence in there that really marked me and I remember it till this day where it says, a spirit of contentment is a sign of true growth and maturity. And I felt that so deep because at that time I was not content and I'm like, am I mature? Am I actually growing? (laughs) So I began to pray and I was like, Lord, this is in your word. This is something you promise us. I mean, Paul can do it. Paul did it. And he lived a life that was really challenging. So if he was able to be content in all seasons through everything, like, please teach me to be content as well. So that was beautiful. And I began this journey of contentment where I had no idea. But the Lord was literally stripping me from everything that normally makes me run and normally makes me book it to the next season, to the next thing. Even in my mind, he helped me process process stillness and process what it looks like to be content. And when I tell you, this was a journey because within my spirit, I could literally feel myself fighting internally, like my old self and my new mindset of wanting to be content and wanting to submit to Christ and to allow him to let, to make this a new pattern in my mindset, a new heart posture, a new perspective that I was receiving and wanting to walk out. Man, it was a challenge, but I'm glad that I can actually be a testimony to you guys and share because it was a challenge. So I want to go back to that question when I said, maybe ask yourself, are you willing to stay or do you desire to run? Because I had to ask myself that question and I wanted to run so badly. I wanted to get a new job, start over, go somewhere else, and I knew that that wasn't the right answer. So I was willing to stay. So in that question, I realized, yes, I am willing to stay. Although I do want to run, I am willing to stay. And that was such a challenge because there were many reasons and things that came up where I could have left and walked away, but the Lord's grace provided another way. So I stayed at my job and I learned contentment. I mean, of course, I haven't perfected it, but I'm definitely growing in that area. 
and it's been beautiful. I got a little bit of a detour in my career and my position, and I'm doing something else, but it's actually the Lord's blessing, and I'm still in the same place, which is teaching me contentment, and it's not exactly what I desired or wanted or planned for, but it's everything that I love to do, and I get to work with youth, I get to teach, and I get to really just walk alongside one of my coworkers that has such a big passion about that as well, and it's nothing that I could have planned or tried to apply for because it wasn't even a position, so I'm thankful to the Lord that he allowed this to happen, and now, even through that, is teaching me contentment. I'll tell you a few ways that he's teaching me in my current situation. So, I know that I'm supposed to learn how to be still and stay put when nothing interesting is going on, and I actually got that word before the new year and before I was going through this season. So it's really important to write down what you feel like God's telling you. And he also said to learn not to rush to the next thing so quickly you miss the present. And I want to share that because I feel like that's a word for someone as well. There's something that you are in the midst of doing and trying to figure out, but it's so common and easy for you to rush and plan or go to the next thing But I believe and I feel that the Lord really wants to teach you not to rush and to be still and to rest in the current situation that you're in and not quickly move because he has something to teach you in the present and you don't want to miss that because the present is so beautiful and the present is where we can actually be our raw and genuine and real self. So I feel like there's someone here listening that is struggling with their identity, struggling with who they're supposed to be in Christ and I just feel like there's a season where you're going to be tempted to rush and move quickly, but he's calling you into the stillness, and I believe that that is so correlated with contentment. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, if you're trying to decide to plot, like planning a way, plotting an escape route, I just feel the word, don't go for the escape route and rest and just be present because there's something that you will miss if you go to the next thing so quickly, and I just believe God wants you to know that he sees you and he knows that it's challenging and everything in you wants to just run away and just move on but i feel like there's so much that he has for you in this current situation and i just feel the words like don't run don't take the escape route and really trust that he's teaching you and he's helping you to be still even though nothing interesting is going on and nothing that's capturing your attention and fully like making you engage and making you so excited but he's teaching you how to be content and present even in the not not so interesting moments so this was really common in my life when all i knew was to run all i knew was to start over and go do something else and go somewhere else and it was very subtle because although I lived in Florida for many years in my day-to-day or in my year-to-year there was a lot of things that I switched and changed and started over and it was very deceiving (laughs) but this is another key point When I started praying against deception, that's when my eyes opened and things just began to shift. So I want to encourage you, wherever you are, whoever you are listening, just take a moment to pray against deception and ask the Lord for revelation and clarity in the decisions you're making and the positions you're in and the choices that you have to make in this season because it's very important to hear the Holy Spirit and not your own desires and other people's voices. So the way that I knew that I started to become content in this season was when that desire to run and go somewhere else and start over slowly faded away. It started to calm down and diminish and it almost felt like it quieted like it wasn't something that was so loud in my mind or so strong in my heart but I began to desire to stay and it started to become familiar and it was something that I was willing to accept 
and I just really feel like that is something that will help you guys realize as well. When you are content in a relationship, in a friendship, in a job, in a career, you are willing to accept staying, even if it's challenging, even if it's not exciting, or it might not be exactly what you pictured or thought it would be, but you know that there's so much you're going to get out of that. There's so much that's going to come from it, whether it's in a couple years or in a couple months. We don't know how long the season is in what God is calling us to do because we cannot predict the future in that way. But that feeling of staying and beginning to see things in a different light, in a new perspective, is just so wonderful. And I think that is the shift of contentment. It seems like we're more afraid to run because we don't want to do the opposite of what God is calling us to do or what we feel like we should do according to where the Lord is leading us. And God is so wonderful with holding our heart and speaking to us and providing peace because even if it's something that we're so uncomfortable with doing, we have this immense peace, this like unexplainable peace that just completely consumes our mind, our heart, our like body. I don't even know. It's crazy. I don't know how to explain it, but it's so wonderful. And I pray that you feel that too, because it might not be something super exciting or something that you want to do, but we want to honor God and we want to obey God above everything, right? So he helps us do the things that we're uncomfortable with and we're not really sure, but we know that he is the one leading us to it, right? So another point in recognizing if you're content may be that there is a possible life change happening, something big, something huge, like a different shift maybe in your job or your career. I'm trying to give examples so it comes to life, but let's just imagine a possible life change. You fill in the blank and you are thinking about it and pondering it, but you're like, no, I don't actually want to take a step in that, even though that's something I totally prayed for and I totally desired, but I don't know. I'm feeling pretty good in the place that I'm in right now and that my friend. That is contentment. And most of the time when you are in that place, I'm not promising anything, but most of the time when you're in a place like that for a long time, there comes a shift and there comes a change because God wants us to be content. He wants to teach us that no matter what season we're in and no matter where we go, we can actually have the spirit of contentment and we could learn to steward it well. I know it's a challenge because lots of things are thrown at us and sometimes when we're on the mountaintop, if you haven't heard this expression, there's the mountaintop and the valley moments. But sometimes when we're in the mountaintop, we want to stay there and we want to be there and we really want to just live there you know but it's not possible because we go through trials and we go through things that are hard so when we go to the valley and we might be going through something difficult that we don't understand and we may so desperately want to get out of we can also be content in those moments in the darkest valley in the moments where we possibly could feel hopeless but we know that the lord provides that hope and that he can provide a way out in that this too shall pass that that difficulty will not be forever it's temporary and we will see joy again we will feel his peace and we have those things even in the hardest moments but sometimes those feel very far away but when we practice contentment and we can receive the spirit of contentment we can have that hope that it will get better and we can have that hope that we are secure and we are grounded in the Lord, in the reality of who he is and who he says we are. Amen. Wow, that was a good word. (laughs) So I don't know if you heard that term, the mountaintops or valleys, but if you didn't, I just want to clarify a little bit because it's similar to the phrase highs and lows. So when you are on a high with God and you're going through like a great time, you know, and everything's working out, like everything feels great, but then your low is the valley where 
you're not doing so hot and you don't really feel that great. You don't really want to be around people, but you know you'll get through it because God's got your back, right? So to wrap up the story about my job, because I don't think I finished that, in answering the question of are you willing to stay or do you desire to run, now that I desire to stay or now that I'm willing to stay and have walked through that, I really believe that I'm able to see the fruit of the Lord and I have been just exploding with so much excitement in moments. I can't lie and say that it's perfect, but there's moments where I'm doing exactly what I feel like God called me to do, where I'm like, wow, this is so worth it. This is real. This is exactly what I know I'm supposed to do. And then there's moments where I'm like, this is not fun. Like, what am I doing? How can I get through this season? (laughs) And God just reminds me, hey, like, I asked you to stay. Are you willing to stay and walk with me and work with me and allow me to work on your heart? And I just feel like everything slows down a little bit and it just feels peaceful and it feels restful. And it really just gives me the image of God working on my heart as I'm resting and sitting with him and of course we have to do some of the work too but when we're constantly running and in this fast pace and going from thing to thing it's really challenging for God to actually work on our heart and do so-called heart surgery which he loves to do because he wants to renew us and prepare us for the next thing and really help us just be the best version of ourselves so if you are in a season where you are deciding whether you should stay or run, I would suggest ask the Lord, what are you trying to teach me in this season? How can I obey you in this season? And how can I live out contentment? And actually ask him, teach me to be content in this situation. And who knows, maybe that big life change that you're praying about will come around the corner. (laughs) So I want to read another verse and that's going to be in Hebrews 13 verse 5. And it says, Keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So I think we can look at this verse and realize that a lot of things try to come up as a priority besides God. And here specifically, it's saying for us to live free from the love of money. And that could be us prioritizing other things like our job instead of God. But remembering, like as we're reading this and pondering this, remembering that we don't have to strive, we don't have to work hard and toil, laying our lives down for something else when God wants to be the one that has the highest priority in our heart. He wants us to love him, to honor him, to put him first. And in this verse, he just reminds us like, you don't have to strive for something else. You don't have to put all the work in trying to earn other things because I will never leave you. I will not forsake you. I'm here with you and I love you and I'm cheering you on and I desire a relationship with you. I desire to see you succeed. So don't put all your eggs in another basket. Put them with me. I just feel like God's saying like, put all of your heart in me. And remember, I will not forsake you. I will not leave you. Because truth be told, a lot of people in this world will disappoint us and they may even leave us. Hopefully not if they're really close, but it's always possible and God promises us he will never leave us and never forsake us. So why would we not honor him? Why would we not put our everything in him to give him back all of the love that he tries to give us, that he has given us, that he pours into us? We just have to return it and he will be so happy. He desires this relationship with us. And that causes contentment because we know that we are loved. We know that we are secure in our relationship with him and that he will never walk away. So a question is, why would we walk away? Why would we run full force into his arms and rest with him and walk with him and do life with him? That's what causes contentment too. And I realize I use the word run, but instead of running away from him, we can run to him. And that shows our contentment because we are not hiding anymore and we're able to 
accept all that he has for us and walk with him through life. And now I want to jump into 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 9 through 10. I was actually reading this this morning which was so powerful because it talks about, well, it's basically Paul crying out to the Lord and asking him to remove the thorn of his flesh. And God says to him, or Jesus says to him in verse 9, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Then Paul goes and says, Therefore I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with my weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And this is so powerful because no matter what we might have in our lives that we feel is blocking us or carrying us away from the Lord, we really have to look to Him and ask Him to remove those things. And sometimes, they may not be removed because it's the very thing that helps us run to God and love Him and ask Him to give us the strength to keep going. So I love that Jesus says, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. So when we recognize our weakness, that we are not all powerful and we are not all perfect, we can really embody the reality of who Christ is and everything that he offers because his power is made perfect in our weakness and we can be content with this. We can be content that we're not perfect because Jesus is perfect and he is what allows us to have that relationship with our Abba Father, with our God. And I just love that so much because it takes off all the pressure, it takes off all the worry of having to be a certain way or earn a certain position or title or image, really. We just have to be us and we have to allow the Lord and Holy Spirit to fix our hearts, to change our hearts. But really, the parts that we are weak, that's where Jesus shines the most because it's for his glory and not for our own. And I'm going to tell you something that might make you laugh, but I used to be the worst speaker ever. I was terribly shy, did not like to talk to anybody. I always say this, but I couldn't even ask someone to move over at the lunch table when I was in high school because I was so terrified of talking to strangers or talking to people. I was so shy. It was crazy, but you know. The Lord really challenges us and puts us in situations that heals us and makes us grow. So here I am even having a podcast and I absolutely love talking and that is just God's glory because I was completely terrified, so frozen, mainly of public speaking, but even talking to like someone that I didn't know that was just like one person. (laughs) That's just hilarious, but thank you, Lord, for fixing that and healing that. And I just share that because whatever you feel like you're struggling with or you feel like you can't do or you're absolutely terrified, just watch out because that might be the very thing that the Lord is calling you to do. (laughs) So again, I'll ask the question, how do we know if we are content in the season we're in? And I just have to say, Even when things aren't so exciting, we're actually able to see things brighter and see the color in the things around us. And something that I think of is if we go outside and we look at the trees, I don't know where you guys are, but let's say there's green trees around, like sometimes the trees look so much brighter and the green looks so much brighter. Or if we're thinking about our workplace, we can see that there is so much purpose in the position we're in, whether it's looking at our coworkers or looking at the people we work with individually or personally, but we can see beautiful things that are highlighted in our day-to-day life that we didn't recognize before. But now that we're crossing over to contentment, we're able to see things with a different perspective and enjoy life a little bit deeper and enjoy life more because we're not rushing to the next thing and we're not missing the present moment because we're really acknowledging, hey, like this is the current season I'm in. How can I enjoy it? How can I quote unquote take advantage of it? How can I make the most of it instead of 
focusing on what's next and trying to live in the next thing. I can actually live in today and really enjoy it and build relationships and have these conversations and take moments to bless others and receive blessings from others. Like, ah, it just is so refreshing to me talking about this because it's something I am living currently. And when I tell you there's nothing like living in contentment. It just really feels amazing. <laughs> so, I want to go into another verse before we close, and that's in Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. And I'm actually going to read it in the Amplified Version. So, it starts off by saying, Though the fig tree does not blossom and there is no fruit on the vines, Though the yield of the olive fails and the fields produce no food, though the flock is cut off from the fold and there are no cattle in the stalls, yet I will choose to rejoice in the Lord. I will choose to shout in exaltation in the victorious God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength my source of courage, my invincible army. He has made my feet steady and sure, like hind's feet, and makes me walk forward with spiritual confidence on my high places of challenge and responsibility for the choir director on my stringed instruments. <laughs> okay, it kind of cut out my laugh, but... <laughs> I just want to leave that in because I meant to say for the choir director on my stringed instruments and I definitely read that totally wrong <laughs> but you get the point um th these verses are so beautiful I just love the picture that it paints where verses 17 and 18 well verse 17 it just seems so down it's like nothing is blossoming nothing is growing there's no food no produce there's no flock everything is dull no cattle in the stalls but even though that is going on I can choose to rejoice and I can choose to praise the Lord because he's still good. Just because nothing is working out and nothing is happening, that doesn't change who God is because he's wonderful, he's magnificent, he's glorious, and he's never changing. And then it goes into verse 19 and it says, the Lord is my strength. He is the source of my courage. This is incredible. He literally is the source of our courage. And I love the next part. It says, he has made my feet steady and sure like hind's feet. And this reminds me of a verse back in Psalms where it says, he makes my feet like those of a deer and enables me to walk on mountain heights. So he establishes our feet our feet he establishes the path before us and he enables us to walk to walk with our heads held high to walk with courage to walk with strength to walk with this confidence that we are the children of God and we are empowered by his love empowered by his truth and we can have this confidence then the next part says and makes me walk forward with spiritual confidence wow look the words right there on my high places of challenge and responsibility. So even whatever we're going through, wherever we are right now, if we're going through challenges and we have tasks that we have to complete that are just overwhelming and all the responsibility we have, maybe we're a mom or um, a parent or something in our job that has a high title or high authority maybe we're a pastor or a leader of a small group or something and we have this great responsibility but god gives us the confidence to walk forward and lean on his strength so that we don't have to do it in our own strength and he is the one that directs the choir he's the one that directs our path that directs us in even when there's no fruit in the season that we're in he is still good. He's still amazing. And this can cause us to have that contentment and that security and that great foundation and be completely grounded in him. And a long time ago, I had a prayer where I just wanted to be secure in heart. And lately, the Lord reminded me of this. And he said, remember when you prayed that you wanted to be secure in heart? Did you know what that meant? 
I think part of me knew, but I was just so desperate to be grounded and truly trusting my identity as a child of God. So that's what I wrote down. And I think the beautiful thing is being secure means to be fixed or fastened so as not to give away, become loose or be lost. So when we are secure in heart, secure to God, secure to Jesus, there's no way that we could be given away. There's no way that we could become lost or loose because we are attached to him. We're fixed and fastened and one with him. And I think that's so beautiful that he reminded me in this season because my prayer of being secure in heart was really to be secure to Jesus. And I want to challenge you guys in this season, are you secure in Jesus? Do you feel like he is your firm foundation, your strong tower, what you can rest in, what you can fall back on? This will really help you find contentment in life because you will be content in Jesus. You will be content in the one that provides fullness of life, fullness of joy, fullness of growth and stability and joy and the abundant life. So again, we'll end off with this wonderful question. How do we know if we are content in the season that we're in? And I just want to ask you again, do you feel like running or are you willing to stay? And if your answer is willing to stay, get ready for the ride because it might not be everything you dreamed of or everything you desire, but you will feel that internal battle and you will feel the stillness begin to ground you and remind you that it's so much better to honor the Lord and obey the Lord than to step out in our own flesh and rule our our lives and take the, the driver's seat of our life. We should take a step back take the passenger seat and allow Jesus to take the driver's seat of our life. Um, Thank you so much for listening to this word and this episode. I really appreciate you guys and I hope this blessed you. And yeah, please share with someone you think will enjoy this word too. And yeah, thank you for tuning in. Be blessed, never stressed. (laughs) Just kidding. No, but seriously, I hope you guys have a great week and be blessed. I love you guys. Until next time.